Hey, praise the Lord and greetings to you in Jesus' name. This is Brother Clinton. It is the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, and it's also the 15th of February, the year of our Lord, 2015, 5775. I want to read with you something from a very popular novel that's uh, very widely sold these days, especially in the USSA. It says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That which I have just read to you is not the Word of God. It's not what Paul the Apostle wrote in the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. It is a passage from a, a, a novel, a book called the New International Version of the Holy Bible. And just to let you know, just because the word holy is stamped on the front cover of a book doesn't mean that it's holy. Uh, all it means is that somebody used the extra ink to print the word holy there. <laughs> Uh, that what makes a Bible holy, what makes a book holy, is that it is the Word of God. And if you speak English, the Word of God is the authorized King James Version of the Holy Bible. Let me read to you Romans chapter 10, verse 9 out of the Holy Bible. It says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I want to bring up a couple of very quick points about this verse of Scripture. Number one, the difference between these two uh, quotes that I've just read to you, one first one was from the novel, the New International Version, and the other one is from the Holy Bible, King James Version. They, they are very different from one another. Um, Paul did not say that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. He didn't say anything like that. And the reason that I stress this is because it, you may think that it's a subtle difference, but it's a very important difference because just over a hundred years ago, there was a, a very pernicious false doctrine that was invented and brought into the church that never existed anywhere in history before then that teaches that if a person will get on his knees and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and, and accept him as his personal Lord and Savior, that he will be saved, that he will be a Christian, that he will be saved from his sins, that he will have the Holy Spirit, and that he will be ready to enter into the kingdom of God. That's a lie. There's no such thing taught in the Bible anywhere. None of the prophets or the apostles or Jesus himself ever mentioned anything like that, ever even heard of anything like that. And no such thing was ever in existence or heard by anybody until just a little over a hundred years ago. No such thing ever existed. Okay, there's no such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You can do that all day long, every day, for the rest of your life, and you'll still be a lost sinner until you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. And so, by Making novels like the New International Version, the, the New American Standard Version, the Today's English Version, all those New Age Bibles that are printed in English but are different than the actual Word of God, they create books that are similar to the Word of God, and so that those that are not born of the Word of God, it appears to them to be God's Word, but it's not God's Word. Okay, When you take one word out of a sentence and you change that word, it changes the meaning of the entire sentence or at least it has the ability to do so. And that's what was done with this particular verse. Okay? Romans 10.9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... Okay, now, now that I've told you what it doesn't say, I'm going to tell you what it does say. And something that's very important for us to understand about this passage of Scripture is that verse 9 is not the beginning of the sentence. Okay? It begins in the middle of a sentence. The beginning of the sentence is in verse 6. And this passage of scripture is a passage in a letter that was written by Paul the Apostle to the church at Corinth. And the chapter begins by saying, Brethren, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is. And so we can see from the beginning of this chapter, and even from the beginning of the letter in chapter 1, verse 7, um, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This letter was written to the saints. It was not a letter written to the world to tell lost people how to be saved from their sins. It was a letter that was written to the church. And in this letter that was written to the church, in the 10th chapter, Paul the Apostle was teaching, in fact, throughout the whole epistle of Romans, he was teaching about the gospel from beginning to end. In the first chapter, he said that he is not ashamed of the gospel, and he intended to preach it to them. 
Okay, he was not preaching the gospel to them in the sense that they were sinners and they and they needed to know what to do to be saved. He was preaching the gospel to them in the sense that they had been saved from their sins, and he was, as an apostle, teaching them so that they could be established in the faith and understand how the gospel that they obeyed actually worked and have a revelation of it so that they could not only abide in it strongly, steadfastly, rooted and grounded in the faith, but also so that they could teach others as well. And in chapter 10, Paul was teaching them, these Christians, the difference between the righteousness of the law and the righteousness of faith. In other words, he was teaching them the difference between how the people of Israel obtained their righteousness under the law before God, the difference between that and how we as Christians obtain our righteousness before God in the New Testament, the righteousness which is of faith. The way that the, the, that the people of Israel gained their righteousness before God under the Old Testament was to do the commandments that God gave them, okay, to keep the law and, the, and the, the, the ordinances of the law which would roll over their sins from year to year on the Day of Atonement as the priest made, made atonement for their sins in the tabernacle on the Day of Atonement and as they throughout the year brought their sacrifices unto the temple and kept the ceremonial uh, carnal ordinances, as the Bible says, of the law. Okay, that was the righteousness of the law. But now, in this New Testament, the way that we keep our righteousness before God, and when I say we, I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ, those who are born of water and of the Spirit, those who are baptized in his name and filled with his Spirit, okay, because Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And that's why his apostles preached, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, water and Spirit. All his apostles preached the same gospel, including Paul. Okay. Now, Paul is not telling lost sinners how to be saved from their sins in chapter 10 of Romans. He's explaining to the church at Rome, the Christians, <clears throat> the difference between the righteousness of the law and the righteousness of faith. We looked at the way that Israel pleased God and was righteous before God under the Old Testament. Now, under the New Testament, there is a different way that we as Christians obtain and, and maintain our righteousness before God. How do we do that? We confess his name before men, and we continue in the faith of his resurrection. That's how we do it. Okay? Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. But if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. It's just that simple. Okay? If you, if you are a Christian and you think that you're going to inherit the kingdom of God by hiding in your house and not telling anybody about Jesus Christ, you're sorely mistaken because you will not make it, my friend. You will not make it. Okay, Jesus Christ has given you his spirit so that you can be a witness. That's what the scripture says. You shall be witnesses of me. But this is what Paul is teaching. And he says in verse 9, in the middle of a sentence, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, this has nothing to do with getting on your knees in a church meeting and accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. that Paul had no such thing in his mind whatsoever when he wrote this. Um, he had never imagined such a thing. He had never even heard of any such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And that's why it's not written anywhere in the Bible. Paul never preached to anybody to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Nor did any of the apostles, because there is no such thing. But that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, he's talking about preaching the gospel to other people. He's teaching Christians about the righteousness of faith. And he's saying that if you want to please God, you don't have to do what the Jews did in the Old Testament under the law of Moses, but this is how you have your righteousness before God. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then he goes on to say, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, Paul's not talking about being saved from your sins. He's talking about being saved from the wrath of God that is coming. When Jesus Christ comes to establish his kingdom in the earth, he's coming with a sword and with great wrath. And the only ones who are going to escape that wrath are the ones who have, A, obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ to be saved from their sins, and B, walked in this righteousness so that they will be able to escape that wrath in the future. Okay, and the way that we escape that wrath in the future is to continue in the faith of of our Lord Jesus Christ, that God the Father hath raised him from the dead. Because Paul went on and on and on in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians talking about how, how say there are some among you that there is no resurrection from the dead. If there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ is not risen and your faith is in vain. If you stop believing that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, then you're lost. 
Okay? It doesn't matter if you were previously a Christian or not. If you stop believing that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, then neither will you be risen from the dead. Period. It's just that simple. Okay? So there is a resurrection. Jesus Christ is the first fruits, and those of us who are his at his coming will follow him. But if you stop believing in that, then you will not be a partaker in it. It's just that simple. So, verse 11, For the scripture saith, whosoever, For whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. And remember when Ananias came to Paul in the 22nd chapter of Acts in verse 16. He said, And, and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22.16 This is how we call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. We arise and repent from our sins and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. That's how we call upon the name of the Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now look at verse 14. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? How are people supposed to call upon the Lord in baptism to be saved when they haven't believed in him? Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Well, how are they going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if they've never heard of him? If they haven't heard about him? Makes perfect sense again. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Okay, It's not written in the clouds. You know, the trees don't proclaim it. Angels haven't been sent to the world to preach it. God has ordained that his church preach his word, proclaim his name. And that's what Paul was talking about when he said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. He was talking about, he was teaching Christians the difference between the righteousness of faith and the righteousness of the law. And he was telling Christians, this is how you keep and maintain your righteousness before the Lord. You preach Jesus Christ, you proclaim his name, you confess his name before men. And you continue in the faith of the resurrection. And if you continue to do those things, and also of course keep yourself holy, keep yourself unspotted from the world, then you will be saved. He's telling this to Christians. If you're a Christian, you're saved from the power of sin so that you can live right. That's called being a saint. Okay? If you're a Christian, a saint, you're not saved from the wrath of God that is coming because it hasn't come yet. You will be saved if you live in obedience to the Lord and walk according to the teachings of the apostles. The righteousness of faith is on this wise, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, if you don't believe this and you still want to pretend that Paul was talking about accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and if you want to argue with me about it, my only point to you, my only, my only point of conversation with you is, if you want to continue in that conversation with me, then you show me in the scripture some place where any apostle of Jesus Christ ever told anybody to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, and that if they did such a thing, they would become a Christian and be saved. If you can show me that, then I'll continue this conversation with you. And the reason I say that is because you can't show me that, because there's no place in the scripture that, that says that or even remotely suggests it. So if this is confounding to you, and I understand that, okay, because you were taught something from all your life or for many years or whatever, and I was taught that too a long time ago. And it's very hard for you to receive what I'm saying right now because it goes against everything that you've been taught. But I beseech you to get on your knees and pray to the Lord about it and seek him about it. Seek him in his word, and you'll see that that which I am telling you is the truth. There are so many people in the churches today that insist, and I'm talking about pastors, theologians, teachers, bishops, reverends, whatever they want to call themselves in their folly and, their, and, the, and the doctrines and deeds of the Nicolaitans giving themselves flattering titles and, and silly costumes. And they will, they, will, they will swear by the false gospel that they preach and misusing the scripture in Romans 10.9 to tell people that if they will accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, if they'll get on their knees in a church meeting and confess in public that Jesus is Lord, and they call that in public in a church meeting, it's not really in public, but you know what I mean, that if they will publicly declare that Jesus is Lord in a church meeting and accept him as their personal Lord and Savior, that they're saved. They will stand by that, they will live by that, and they will die by it, and they will go to hell by it, because it is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
And Paul said in the book of Galatians, in the letter to the Galatians, he said, but if we, the apostles, but if we, or, how does he say it? But if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Praise the Lord. Let me make sure I'm saying it right. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. Okay, see, he says, as we, the, all the apostles, said before, so say I now again. He's saying Paul himself. Okay, as all the apostles said, so I'm saying now again, all the apostles preached the same gospel. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. See, So I'm preaching to you the truth from the Bible. And what you've been taught all your life or for many years or whatever, in whatever particular denomination you've been in, is, is contradictory to that. So one of us is preaching a false gospel and one of us is a curse of God. So that's a very important thing for us to understand and to seek God about. Because I tell you again in the name of Jesus Christ that there's no such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And contrary to what the multitudes in the churches today will say, even the ones who have graduated from seminaries and have degrees that say that they know the Bible in English and, and in Greek and in Hebrew and in Latin and in Aramaic, it doesn't matter what their education has told them. It doesn't matter about that. All that matters is what the scripture says. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. And all those men that are telling you that if you'll accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you'll be a Christian, that you'll be saved, they're lying to you. You will be saved if you're a Christian. You will be saved if you do what Paul the Apostle said in Romans chapter 10. But if you're not a Christian, if you haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, Accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is vain and it will avail you nothing because there is no such thing. But the way to be saved from sin, the, the gospel that the apostles preached, Paul and all the other apostles, the way that they told people what to do to be saved, when people said, what must I do to be saved? Yes, Paul said to that jailer, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thy house. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And that's true. And then they went into their house and they preached Jesus unto them, and they baptized them straightway. Why? Because they preached the gospel unto them, they believed, and they were baptized. This is why Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. No apostle of Jesus Christ ever told anybody, except Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And no apostle of Jesus Christ ever told anybody that if you just make a public profession, Jesus is Lord, you're going to become a Christian. That's how you become a Christian. That's not true at all. No apostle ever told that to anybody. So I give you these things again in Jesus' name. I've preached this on this channel many times, but there are many of you out there who aren't searching my older videos and you're, just, you're subscribed, and that's a wonderful thing, and you're just waiting for more videos to come up on your subscriptions list. So I needed to, to talk about this again, and I probably will need to talk about it again and again because there's so many out there who believe that they're Christians when they have never obeyed the gospel of Christ. And you know what, my friend? I'm not any better than you. I was under that same delusion for a long time. But because I was born again by the grace of God, I searched the scriptures. And as I searched the scriptures, I began to see that the gospel that I had obeyed, that I thought made me a Christian, didn't exist anywhere in the Bible. And when I saw that it wasn't in the Bible anywhere, I began to ask God about it, and he showed me the truth. And he will to you too, if you seek him with all of your heart. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. May this message be a blessing to you if you love the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.